Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Board Explorer, out on another exploration, and I'm joined once again by the lovely John Coolcut. <laughs> I got his name right this time, and we are in Newdigate in Surrey, but we, in our last video that we did, we were down, down by the church and exploring the story of Mrs. Jensen mm -hmm. and the carving boys. She loved wood carving, and uh, so as a um, relatively young married woman, uh, she was really fed up at looking at all the kids hanging around the village right. uh, with nothing to do and said, we're going to teach them to do some wood carving. But uh, there's a load of history here, it's more than one can f squeeze into little videos like this. But John, nice to meet you again. And you, Richard? You've taken me <laughs> down a muddy track to the north of the village. Well, let's just imagine what Newdigate was like. And if you wanted to go anywhere, you walked along tracks like this. Right. Um, but this is a special place, believe it or not. Um, you could see it's a bit of water over there. Oh, yes. But this was, in fact, a man-made lake. Oh, was it? 90 acres. And it was dug out by hand Gosh. in the mid-1500s. 90 acres Be dug out by hand. Because this was an area where they could make iron. Right. You had ironstone. You had a, there was a, it would have originally been a small river there, so they dammed it up, and I'll show you where that where they dammed it, and um, they created this this lake. You had ironstone here, lots of trees for making charcoal, so you had and running water. You had the prime things that you needed for making iron, and uh, so they dug out this lake, and across here they created a, a d dike all the way along along there. Then, when they wanted water for powering the blast furnaces, they just cut through and the water rushed through and powered the mill that powered the blast furnaces. Wow. So here would have been full of charcoal burners, tree fellers, and, and people working on, on the actual ironworks. Yes, yes. So this would have been a hive of industry. It would have been noisy. You, know, you think here that you're just miles from anywhere but this is where the industry is this was the heart of the wheeled iron industry it, and that's and this stretched right the way through into sussex and kent and and that's the <laughs> same sort of story isn't it that you can come out into a beautiful rural quiet place like this which we've just driven through uh, what is now a millionaire's row sort of thing <laughs> um, and it's all lovely but roll back the time and that hive right. of activity yeah, yeah. of men sweating away and and of course this meant that the people who were here had to be fed, so therefore that gave prosperity to the local farms, yes. the local small holdings. And so when you look around Newdigate where you see the old timber frame buildings, they all date from this period. So there could have been an existing farm and they got a little bit more money so they could extend an existing farm, or they pulled it down and built a new one right. using old timbers. Yes. And so that created a, a short period prosperity because the iron works probably only here for 50 years oh really but we think it closed around about 1604 and the duke of norfolk um, took over ownership of uh, a lot of the land in the early 1800s and uh, drained the lake and um, turned it into pasture land good heavens mm. so a snapshot of history just really. a snapshot really yeah uh, and yet so here. important mm. but if we walk around here yes. i'll show you where the the dike was and i can show you exactly where the blast furnace is fantastic okay. we'll go back along the muddy track <laughs> Just on a little bridge here, going over what is a, a small stream. Seem to have lost John. Just passing down um, a friend of John's who lives in this rather magnificent house behind us to what you can hear a roar of a weir, I think. So, here we are, so, John. Here we have the bank right across here that was built. And then it was cut through. A culvert was made there and a culvert was made there. And the blast furnace sat just there. Let's just, just take that in. 
Does, does this uh, river stream have a name? No, sister. No, no. no. And uh, wow. So you could imagine the the iron would have been made, and then it would have to have been transported yes. to be made into armor, cannon, pots and pans. But that would then have had to been transported to where the works were, which might have been as far as London. Gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you've got to, again. It's back to these muddy clay. This is uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't believe how tough life was. Yes. Incredibly tough. Well, when the, um, the ironworks closed down, previously the miller used to take all the extra water further downstream there, and he had his mill there. Oh, I see. Then when the ironworks closed, he said, right. <laughs> so... There's a touch of glee there. He built himself a house, and um, he had his mill here. And about three or four years ago, this was drained and underneath here you could still find they still found the brick mill race and the the shaft that, ca that carried the wheel good heavens and that's all underneath here wow and uh, he built that and then the farmhouse which we just passed over there that was also built so this was all came after the ironwork so you're talking of these places being built in say round about 1610 that sort of period and I mean they're fine upstanding buildings and you know that timber just seems to last and last mm. doesn't it mm. this is quite well go, going back even before that just behind us there's um, you can see a little area of land which is slightly raised and there was uh, a capital mansion house there and we think it was probably another um, ma manor large manor house and it was probably they used for for wining and dining for the huntsman right because this was all a deer park oh see so we're going so back to the norman period so we're going back to late norman late period Normans. yeah when it was a deer park yes mm -hmm. gosh how it, so it's had multiple uses it has over yeah, those yeah. time and now but course, can you believe you're 30 miles from central london no, I mean, no. You, as I said to you, you're in a different world here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, away, yeah. 30 yeah. miles away. It mm. is incredible. And this story of the, of the ironworks is repeated all around the Weald. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, right into Kent. Right into in fact, I think it lasted longer in Kent. I think this was probably an early one to go. Yes. But in the next village at Lye, there was another ironworks there as well yes because they're all through the Surrey Hills yes but everything was carefully managed all the felling of trees they had to be replaced yes. even in those days because they needed I, them well it was needed for house building shipbuilding um, so uh, timber was realized that it was an important resource that unless it was managed would disappear yes so you've got to hand it to people even in the 1500s, you know, they, they, they were knew thought, they thinking were of conservation in those days. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. They were much closer to, they were close to nature nice. and, and those sort they of things. I think we, yes. we're, we're a bit more removed from it now. And we take it for granted, don't we? We do. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. John, it's a yeah. fascinating story. Thank you okay, so well, much. Thank, for thank you for coming down. No. I bet you didn't know this place existed. I absolutely <laughs> had no idea, and it's been a big eye-opener. So good. once again, thank you so much. Good, good. And thank you for watching, and do leave your comments and let us know what you think. And if there's an area that you think would be interesting for me to come and investigate that, again, is hidden away and people don't know about it, then get in touch. Till the next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.